G'day, welcome to the Common Depot. My name's Paul, and on my old forklift here, I've got this vintage Steam Master Steam Cleaner. Now, this is an oil fired steam cleaner from about the 1940s, early 50s. Um, it has a, a blast tube running through the middle here, which is fan forced, electrically fan forced, and then it has a, a steam generating coil inside the boiler here. So, it hasn't been run in at least 30 years. Um, it's all pretty rusted up. We're going to strip it down. We're going to recondition it, rebuild it, put it back together and get it back to work. Now what I want to use it for here is the engines and machinery using the high pressure steam to degree size. So, the fact that it's made in my local capital city, uh, which is 400 miles away, but Perth in Western Australia, um, things haven't been made here like this for a long time, so I really want to save it from the scrapyard and get it back to work. Um, so I'll bring you over, show you a look around the machine, and then we'll make a start on it. Well, I don't know a lot about this machine. Matter of fact, I don't know anything about it. Um, <clears throat> but I've had, I've spent a bit of time sitting here and uh, and looking over it and trying to figure out how it all works. So what we've got is a uh, single phase electric motor here, a high voltage spark generator which uh, looks a bit dodgy but we'll get all this on the workbench strip it down check it safe before we fire it up up the top here this was seized and i've actually um already put in some some oils in it and freed it up this is actually a fuel pump so it's missing a fuel tank that would sit here which would hold your bunker oil or lighting oil heating oil and then uh, this pump would pump that oil into the blast tube here which is then fan forced via the, fa the electric motor here now the wild electric motor is running it drives um, this belt drives the pump which pumps the water it's an old piston pump here which pumps the water into the boiler down there and also a belt that's missing is a little sort of o-ring belt which comes up here to drive the fuel pump to pump the oil in under pressure into the into the blast tube um, this is the igniter so a high voltage spark ignites the vaporized uh, the fuel or the fuel air mixture in there and then uh, the fan blasts the flames through the coil and out the back through the exhaust here um, you connect your steam uh, wand and hoses to here and this is the pressure release valve i believe the, the, so i'm only really assuming how all this works uh like i said i don't know anything about them but just getting a bit of an idea and a feel for how it works i would say that the pump runs constantly with the fan and then the pump pumps water in here until the pressure builds to a point that um there's too much steam in here and if any pressure has to be released it comes out of the relief valve up here at the cool end by the pump um, and that's spring loaded in their release val relief valve and uh, it's adjustable by here so we've got to take all that apart check it's all safe now the thing that's worrying me the most repairing the electric motor and checking that that's that's all straightforward and easy um, the coil here is what's worrying me the most now the coil appears to be galvanized steel I'm hoping it's not too badly rusted on the inside, which it's probably going to be. So anyway, we've got to try and clean that out. Otherwise, we've got to try and make a new coil in the boiler, and that's, that's going to be a hard job. So up here sits a water tank or a bucket of water with a feed that comes off of there and goes down into this little connector here. And then in there is a little ball cock float like in your toilet system. And... Um, so the water feeds down, fills this, the, sister, the bull cock comes up, cuts off the water, then the pump pumps the water from that little uh, reservoir into the boiler where it's converted into steam. So that's roughly how it works, um, I think. <laughs> anyway, let's get into it. So what we're going to do is we want to take the whole thing apart and um, get that coil out, get water flowing through the coil properly and check it's not got any leaks. So, I've already connected um, some water to this, and it is pretty blocked up. There's barely a dribble, of, uh, a dribble of water coming out of this coil. So we need to take this coil out, clean out the, the, the boiler um, chamber, and uh, clean, out the, uh, clean out the tube. So, I've already taken the four little screws which hold the back cover on. <coughs> and we've 
got to disconnect this pipe. Now, forget. benefits of having a forklift. Okay, so here's the coil. Um, it consists of three, uh, no, one, two, three, four rings of, uh, of pipe, which looks like galvanized pipe. Uh, the section that near the outlet's quite rusty, but uh, hopefully it's not too deep. Um, and hopefully things aren't too blocked up inside. Hopefully it's just sludge and not too much rust, but I think that's wishful thinking. <clears throat> All right. So, I've connected the coil, i put some thread tape in these old joints to make sure they're not going to leak, and I've connected the coil up to a funnel here, uh, which we're going to fill with the CLR, we're going to let it run and soak overnight for a day or even maybe two, through the coil, and then I've got a little catch bottle down there, if any comes out down there, well it does, if not, well and good. So while we're waiting for that to uh, do its work on the coil, we will remove the uh, MODAP pump, take them into the workshop. reservoir which is absolutely full of rust but should be able to repair it. There's always one doesn't want to come out. Okay. Fortunately ended up breaking off three bolts in there but We'll get them out on the bench. This is heavy. Well, I left it hooked up to the uh, CLR clear all night and hardly any went in. This, um, this center coil here, I think it's collapsed inside and you can see, or you might be able to see, right down in there, I'll get a torch, that it's actually leaking through the pipe, sat badly rusted. So the rest of the coils, the other three coils, don't look too bad. Um, so yeah, sure, I could go ahead and make a copper, try and make a copper coil. But copper really isn't strong enough, I don't think, for high pressure steam and it will, the expanding and contracting eventually it'll crack and it'll just fail early. So we want to stick with steel if we can. So we're going to try and cut this center coil out 
and um, see what the pipe's like on the inside because we've still got uh, one, two, three other coils. So we're going to cut it here, uh, cut the welds that hold it, and then lift the coil out. So I've taken out the center coil, and the good news is this coil actually looks quite good. Um, the pipe is not that badly rusted, it's not caved in at all. So that actually looks good, I can use that. But this one, uh, <coughs> it's only up here at this section. It's a shame I couldn't get in and just cut that piece out. Maybe I will, but um, you can see here it's all leaking. It's all rusted through. So all the blockage is here where the pipe has collapsed. So we've got to reform some other coil and bring that back out here. So the damaged section of coil removed, the other three rings of the coil are good. It's all nice and clear, and they're in really good shape still after 70 odd years, so that's really good. But somehow I've got to work out a way of bringing this pipe, uh, you know, bringing it up so I can put the outlet out there. fairly happy of those welds so this is one of the coils I've removed two rings from the coil to uh, get rid of the rusty blocked up pipe and just extended the pipe out and fitted a new outlet um, so I'm fairly happy with the welding for me um, I'm not the world's best welder but that looks pretty good I think it'll do fine okay so with the um, coil repaired we'll get on to the motor uh, what I love about this, this motor is she's really old, obviously, um, and I love old things, but listen to this. What you can actually hear in there is the centrifugal switch, um, the throw out, just running on the contacts. Other than that, the bearings are quiet and that is smooth, so that's really good. Um, what we're going to do though is take this back cover off and this switch, off, this switch house off. You can see the little switch cover there, that's uh, <laughs> really old. This is the igniter, I think. I think when you push that, it, it fires this high powered, um, high voltage coil and then gives you your ignition spark out of here. Um, there's fuel pump and high voltage spark coil. Let's take those off first, get them out of the way. So we'll remove this fuel hose, which still looks serviceable. I think this must have been stored in a shed, this uh, machine, because it's actually, you know, still in fairly good shape. So if you've got a screw like this one that's rusted in there and doesn't want to come out, these screwdrivers are good with the metal impact on the end. You can put it in, tap it with your little, turn you around a bit there, tap it gently with your engineer's hammer and turn at the same time and there she goes. Another one of those. Yeah, that's funny. 
That one's a Phillips head, which says to me that this motor has had a rebuild at some time. Explains why the bearings are so uh, so good. And someone swapped out a screw there for a Phillips head from the original. Uh, okay. Good, 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 good. What have we got any? Oh, we've got some visiting spiders. Is he dead? Oh, he's dead. Or is he? Yeah, just recently. There's a big spider in there. There's always a spider. Living in this old equipment. Another little spider here. This one's actually a um, this one's actually a poisonous one. He's a, a little red back. You see him rearing up there, but we're not gonna take any chances with him. Let's push him. Okay, so it's behind door number two. It's the blower shroud. Nuts and bolts and crap. Alright, I think what we're going to do is we're going to fire this motor up and see if it runs. I reckon it'll run fine. These are the cables for the switch, so if we just join them together, that'll switch that on. These are the, um, the uh, power takeoff for the high voltage spark coil. So we want to blank off those ends. So before we go ahead and plug this motor in, just very temporarily I've used some wire nuts just to stop these from touching anything while we're testing it. And the first thing I'm going to do before I plug it in, I'm going to make sure that the whole unit is earthed. So I'm going to use a multimeter. Set it to continuity. Connect one cable to my earth pin and the other to the machine. Make sure that the machine is earth before I switch it on without actually visually checking the earth is connected, which that is earth. So that earth pin is connected to the motor. Okay, so you know it's earthed. If anything's wrong, it should trip a safety breaker rather than. Uh, Electrify. Also, you probably notice I've got a metal bench here, so we're not going to fire it up on a metal bench. We'll um, we'll put it on the floor and fire it up. Okay, so I've got it plugged in um, to an extension lead, which I'm going to switch on over here at the wall, and we'll see if it works or if it blows up. It's working lovely. It's nice and quiet. That runs runs really nice. Listen to that. That's beautiful. Excellent.
Okay, onto the uh, onto the pump. It's an aluminium pump. It has a little piston and plunger in there, so as it turns, it just moves a small rubber diaphragm, which looks intact. I think it might be okay. What we'll do anyway, the first job, if you remember when I took it apart, I snapped off three bolts in the uh, base. So we need to drill them out. There'll be non-return valves in here. Now I don't know if that's a, a ball behind a spring or or whatever, but what's worrying me is this is aluminium, this is steel. It's a shame they're not brass. So we'll heat it up and hopefully we can get it undone. Let's have a look. Applied a bit of heat, this one's coming undone. The other one's still put up a fight. You've got some kind of plunger valve in there. A one-way valve and yep. It's got a Bring on it and it is really stuck. So there's no way that was going to work. It's not a hope. We need to get it out, clean it up, and get it back in again. Alright, so I got into the pump head, took out these valves. There's these little non return brass little flappers so they can they were all seized but they can be cleaned and put back in that's no big deal we can clean up the seats lubricate that um, there was also a filter in there a little filter uh, which was blocked solid so that wouldn't have worked either and we've got another problem with this pump now so that's all the heads all all serviceable no problem but the next problem we've got with this pump, it's a diaphragm pump, similar to what's in your, um, well, in the old-fashioned car petrol pumps. Um, listen to this. Can you hear that rumbling? That's the bearings. So there's three bearings in there. There's one there, a big one on the bottom of the conrod there, and another one on that side. And they're all stuffed. You can hear how noisy they are. So... Now really we've got no choice but to pull this totally apart and replace all those bearings and uh, do a full overhaul on it. Okay, look at this for a relic from the dark ages. This is the diaphragm, which is still a little bit pliable, but the, what's scaring me is this is just a standard steel bolt. I was hoping it'd be stainless steel. And it just goes through into an aluminium shaft. I can almost guarantee you that even with heat, if I try and undo that, I'm gonna break it off.
So that's the pump all rebuilt. Let's see how it sounds. Listen to that. Brand new bearings, all brand new seals. Ready to go back on. Up next is the system that holds the water before it goes to the pump. Um, she's very rusty. As far as you can... Oh, look at that lot. Tip out the worst of it. God, it's still coming. Can't see any holes on this. Very thick tank, so I think we're still going to be able to use it. So yeah, I can't really get in there, so I think we'll hit it with a sandblaster. Alright, so I sandblasted as much of the rust out as I could, and then I um, treated it with a rust converter acid, and then um, painted it with um, a rubber membrane, so that can go back on. All right, it's all back together nicely, ready for testing. So we're almost there with the um, blower furnace unit. Um, we've got a couple of little problems left. One is we've got to make the drive belt from the uh, shaft of the motor here up to the fuel pump. Now. <clears throat> They sell a um, PU polyurethane belt, which you just buy a roll of, and again, you can buy that on um, eBay or on Amazon, something like that, and uh, you cut it and join it yourself. So I'll show you how to do that. So first thing you want to do is measure, wrap it around it, measure the length that you need, and then cut it. To length. It's pretty strong stuff. And then because this will stretch once it's put on, that will stretch, we need to take about another five five to ten percent off of it. Right, now we've got to join that. And I'll uh, just set up a little jig and then I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so what I've got here is just a, a piece of wood, wood that I found out the uh, in my junk wood pile, which was part of an old window frame. And it's got a nice little groove cut in it. Um, then I've just cut a little slot to hold my metal uh, scraper um, in place there. And now I'm going to heat the scraper up with a burner. Blow red. Okay, now before it cools down too quickly, put it back in the slot 
Now we take our bits of PU and we just hold them against it until it starts to melt. Feel it bubbling and melting. And then we slide them in there and push them together using the uh, groove to keep the join straight and flush. So we've just heated up the ends, melted them, and now we're just welding them together. We'll just have to wait a couple of minutes for that to cool down. Okay, so there's our join. It's pretty strong. Now, the underside of the belt that's going to just run on the pulley, I'm just going to trim off the sort of glob of uh, excess plastic there, just so it runs smooth in the pulley. And that's it. One PU belt made. And there's our belt all installed. So our next little challenge is this is the nozzle where the fuel is sprayed out. And then there should be a metal electrode that goes from here to, um, to the igniter. So this little uh, China insulator holds the igniter. And there should, this electrode should reach out to about here, so the spark jumps across there to ignite the fuel. Um, and that's not going to do that, because uh, this is rusted off. So we need to make a new one of these. What I like to do when I'm making things like that, is I like to keep old uh, feeler gauges that, you know, have, uh, either I don't use hardly ever, or the... Um, numbers have worn off them and I can't read them anymore but they're stainless steel and they're sprung stainless steel so they're, they're great for making little electrodes they're also good for your Briggs and Stratton engines for the old engines any old engine to make your kill um, switch to you know earth out the spark plug you can just drill a hole to suit a, a head bolt put them on there and push them against the plug to earth it out so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this one down we'll cut that off drill through there put that on there make a new contact Okay, here's our sparker electrode. I'm going to fit it there like that, so the spark will leap across there. That should be good. Okay, before we do that, we're going to take out the um, nozzle. This is the fuel nozzle, fuel delivery nozzle. So I guess it's a bit like a nozzle, like a diesel injector nozzle, although probably low pressure. Um, I've already loosened it. We're going to take it out and clean it. So it has a bit of a little uh, wind turbine here to get the air really turning and then the fuel is sprayed out into it. So let's um, take this apart and give it a good clean. And we've just got some carburetor cleaner here. I think that will um, be good. A little filter in there and then the nozzle unscrews. It's clean there. It comes, it's going rock hard, so it's replacing. Now, my little box of O rings, let's see if we've got one like it. Here's one, it's done. Nope. A bit smaller. Here we go. That looks like it. See how that fits. Seems good. Okay. Right, so we can put this back in the little motor. Seat the O ring, but not too tight, so we break the fitting. Okay, check the nozzles tight. Good, now we'll fit our igniter.
and are new. Right. So our, so our fuel sprays out of there and it's ignited by that. Next thing I want to change is this is uh, basically just a spark plug uh, top and they used to have that which somehow clicked on there so I'm not happy about that um, not only is it easy to get a shock from it's not making very good contact so I think seeing as it makes sparks let's use a spark plug boot it just screws into the end of the cable basically just a high tension lead same as on the spark plug and then that should click in there we go. That's on. What I think we're going to do is hook it up and see if we've got a spark. Let's try the sparker. Set that up so you guys can see it. So we'll turn the motor on. Now we'll try the igniter. Wow. That's great, the igniter works great. It looks like something out of a Frankenstein movie, but works perfect. So that's all ready to go back on the machine. So I've just rested the motor up on the machine because we're going to uh, see if it fires up in a second. I've got a new fuel tank which is this uh, uh, solid aluminium um, fuel tank. It's only a little one but that's, I'm not going to be running this machine that much so a little fuel tank holds about a litre will be fine. And I think what we'll do is we'll mount that, mount that about there. So I've got the new fuel tank all strapped in and the hose connected to the pump and I've got some kerosene here or paraffin I don't actually have the correct heating oil and I'm not sure where to get it from so but I am told you can run these things on kerosene or diesel so we're going to run it on we're going to try and get it to light on kerosene first and see how that goes um, but first off I wanted to start the motor and run some of this kerosene through the pump just to give the pump a wash out. So let's do let's do that. I've got a little catch bottle there, and we're going to open the stopcock on top of the pump to 
full. Like that. And then we'll see if any pumps, any any uh, fuel pumps out. <laughs> So we had some issues with fuel pressure there and it turned out that there was just an air block in the pump and um, I figured out there's a little priming nozzle here which was blocked so you have to undo a screw and then there's a little ball in there which allows it to prime. So now we've got fuel pressure which is great. Another step forward. I haven't got the coil in and you can see the uh, sort of jet blast furnace pointing into the boiler there at the back so what we're going to do now is we're going to fire it up we're going to switch it on this thing's either not going to go or it's going to light and run how it should or it's going to burst into flames um, so we're going to find out We've got a fire extinguisher standing by okay here we go starting the uh, motor and fuel pump Whoa. It ignited immediately, but I don't know if you noticed, we've got a nasty fuel leak there we need to fix straight away. But I heard her fire up immediately. Now I can feel the heat in there, so this, <laughs> it, the moment I touched the igniter, she started. Um, so let's fix that fuel leak and then have another go. Okay, I think I've fixed the fuel leak. Let's see how she goes. We'll just turn the, just crack the fuel tap, pump on running. You can see the heat coming out the boiler. Whoa, that is hot. That is insane. That is so powerful. We can really increase it. It's like a jet engine. Turn the fuel up. The heat is pouring out. Turn it off, you just shut off the fuel. Shut off the pump. Wow. I think we can say that is a very successful test of the boiler. Working good, as it should. All right, we better have a look now at one of the last pieces of the puzzle, which is the uh, pressure safety valve, pressure safety relief valve. So we'll start by, um, Taking it apart, I think. Come on. Go on, straight that stuff. Do it. So if you shift that, we'll find a uh, socket for it. I'm going to round it off. I know everyone's thinking, you shouldn't be using a shifter on that. You're going to round that off. And you're absolutely right, man. Ah, there she goes. It's a bit tight. plunger and down here I reckon there'll be a ball yep it's rusted in <laughs> hot I don't even knew I was going to do that I didn't think I put that much heat into it but that is hot I 
Here's the ball and it's filthy. Got a rust ring on it. Okay. Use some waterproof grease. Grease the ball. Yep, should be able to push down on the ball there. Yep, and mimic pressure release. And then, where's the tap gone? There it is. So then you have a, a tap here where you can increase the pressure on the spring which pushes pressure down on the ball and increases the pressure of the system. And then so you can set the pressure by just uh, adjusting this tap and this locking nut. I'm just going to take this over to the wire wheel and clean it up. I absolutely love the way brass polishes up. It's just annoying got to keep polishing it. Put, <coughs> excuse me, put some of this um, plumber's grease. It's like a wedding like waterproof grease. Just on these threads, and on the plunger. And there she is, all nice and shiny. We don't want to put too much pressure on it, not while we're first testing the machine. Ready to go back on. Okay, she's all finished. In the um, efforts to try and keep this uh, this video in under an hour, I'm pitching a bit of a challenge on this project. I've already gone ahead and put most of this back together off film. Um, I'm sorry about that, but you did see it coming apart, so it was just the reverse. So, we're going to test fire it. This is the first start. Um, we're going to, we've got, I made a, a water tank. So it's on the top here, just out of a 20 litre drum. Um, and we're going to start her up, and we're going to First off, pump water, check water comes out the outlet, make sure the pump everything's working. Then we'll connect the hose, start the boiler, and we should instantly see a rise in pressure on the pressure gauge. So let's um, let's start the uh, start the machine and uh, see what happens. So All right, so I guess the first thing, open the water valve, let the water through to the reservoir down there, which is filling. See that? Water's filling in the reservoir. And then the stop cock should shut that off. Once the reservoir is full. Now I guess we'll start the pump and see if water comes out the outlet there. So we'll start the motor. Take a little while to pump that through. Okay, I had to just stop the video there for a sec and um, bleed the pump. So I just had to loosen off these two um, valve nuts and let the water flow through. And I think now we should see water start to come out of the outlet there in a second. See how much see if we can get some steam coming out of there, see if she actually makes steam. So we'll start the pump. We've got a couple of slight leaks. 
and the water pump I have to fix for there any minor problems. Starting to get hot. Okay, great. Let the reservoir refill. So I've made my own wand here out of a bit of uh, pipe with a brass nozzle and I've used high pressure hydraulic hose. So we will try that, see how it goes. Just put on some big gloves. Got a little bit of a leak in the pump. I said this thing wasn't scary to operate, I'd be telling a lie. It's actually quite uh, unnerving. High pressure steam, as you know, can cause terrible burns. So it's not something you want to take lightly. So I really enjoyed restoring this old Steam Master Cleaner. It presented me with a lot of challenges from the electric motor to the fuel pump, the um, water pump, the steam generating boiler coil. It was great fun to restore and I thoroughly enjoyed it. A um, couple of things I've still got to do. There's a little, part, little leak from the uh, water pump I've got to fix and I want to buy some better safety equipment when I'm using it. I'd like a, some kind of head shield and protection and, and uh, cape maybe, but anyway. Um, it seems to work fine, does what it should. If you've sat through this um, video with me for the last 50 minutes or so, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like, subscribe, and you'll get to see this machine as well as others like my Lincoln welding plant, my forklift, all machines I've restored uh, in use in other videos. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll uh, see you in the next one, guys. Take care now. All the best.